Hey everyone, Andy here from Imagine Academy. Today we're going to be highlighting ExoCAD's brand new inner bar feature. Um, we are going to be able to design a full arch wax up and in the same restoration type create a split file inner bar. So you no longer have to create a second design restoration or send your wax up into a secondary software. Um, you can do it all in one single workflow. So we'll take you from beginning to end and we'll jump right into the prescription. All of the implant sites will be set up as a anatomic wax up, screw retained, scan body scan, um, and yes, we want to design digitally and we want to design the bar. Now we're gonna design the bar through the expert mode, but if you want the software to prompt you in the wizard, you have that option as well. The Pontic sites will be set up in a similar manner, just making sure all of your parameters are set up in the exact same way. Um, this is a re recording of the design just so that we can kind of speed through the longer setup steps, um, but you'll still be able to get our tricks and tips for a quick and easy design setup. From here, we'll go right into the CAD. Now we're going to load in our jaw file as well as our scan marker um, files here. We don't have an antagonist for this one just because we wanted to really just demonstrate the inner bar feature. First thing we're going to do is kind of align our scans really quickly. Um, what we like to do first is just make sure both scans are set up in a similar orientation. From there it makes it a little bit easier to see corresponding points along your scans to make a quick and easy um, alignment. Once we set our points, we'll click perform alignment, then a best fit matching. Since it's the same model, I'm not worried about it. At that point, once everything has aligned for us, we'll go back into the wizard. We're gonna skip segmentation and smile creator for right now, but if you had patient photos or a wax up you wanted to segment, you would start those steps in the wizard. You can see the new implant library selection has been updated to make it easier to know exactly which library you're using and which scan body. Um, in this case, we're going to be highlighting MIST SIC's um, multi-unit scan body and library. We'll make sure that the heat map has been activated with each implant just to ensure that we've aligned the libraries accurately. From here, we will do a quick crop of our model. I like to make sure we're on the clean edge there, it makes it a little bit easier. So we'll select our area, do a quick cut, and then to get rid of any artifacts, what we'll do is just do a select by click and crop. Now, if you have very clear emergence profiles like we do in this case, um, we can go ahead and just mark them. For a lot of cases, especially for like all on X cases like this, where the gingiva is pressed up right against the implant, let's say you didn't have a custom healing abutment or something along that nature uh, right after the implants have been placed, you can actually skip the emergence profiles and contour and freeform the intaglio surface of your design by hand but in this case we have um, kind of deeper gingival pockets there so we'll go ahead and just mark those emergence profiles it'll make it a little bit easier on our end so at this point this is where we would be spending the majority of our design time um, we've sped the design up here a little bit quickly but you'll still get again all of the tips that we recommend so first things first, we change the tooth library. You wanna make sure you get into a good habit of doing that before you do any extensive work. From there, we'll go and just kind of set the teeth really quickly in chain mode and then go into advanced right away. This is where we're gonna be spending the majority of our design time. Um, under the advanced tab, we'll quickly just kind of place and focus in first along the patient's midline and then just focus on one side of the arch. In this case, the patient's left side. Let's hide uh, the other side of the arch there. And the main features we're gonna be working with here are just like the anatomic, like pushing and pulling and morphing of the teeth, small area versus large area of interest, right? And then um, you're going to see a lot of the scaling that we're doing is really just on the free axis scaling. So instead of using the tooth axis scaling to do the majority of our kind of adjustments, um, the free axis scaling allows us to scale in any direction in any view rather than being tied to the specific tooth axis of each tooth. So we're going to spend a little bit of time here just pushing and pulling each tooth into position and then using free axis scale to make our size adjustments, right? 
And again, we always recommend that you do the majority of your design work in tooth placement. And we want to be about like 90 to 95% of the way through. And that includes like free forming of the teeth design in the tooth placement step. So again, we're just really using the free forming tab later on as a fine tune adjustments. Here, we're going to be doing the majority of our design work. Remember that the base of that free axis arrow is where it's going to be anchored in terms of uh, the tooth. And then the direction of that arrow is the direction of uh, your scaling. So again, we're going to kind of crown lengthen, crown shorten where we deem necessary. At that point, we'll go back into chain mode, right? Fix the overall occlusal height of our setup. Then do a quick overall symmetry activation from left to right. Uh, from there, do a quick adjustment, fine tune adjustment to the overall position of each tooth. Again, just really quickly. And then once again, do a quick um, overall symmetry now that the teeth are in a better position, right? And so from here, we've spent that time really just adjusting one side of the patient's mouth. And with a quick couple activation clicks of the symmetry feature, the teeth kind of fall into place along the other side. So um, just with that workflow alone should save you a lot of time in terms of your initial setup and kind of fine tuning positions of the teeth. You're also going to notice that we've set up a couple custom views so that we can always reference um, certain angles and views when we're doing setups and doing overall checks. Uh, here we're doing like a one to one um, symmetry feature, which is brand new in ExoCAD 3.3, um, the symmetry tools given to you under the advanced tab. So for those of you that are working a lot of full arches, um, this new feature is going to be very beneficial and helpful. You can see that not only does it have one-to-one -one mirroring, it also gives us the option to do your anti anterior symmetry just between K9 to K9. So you're no longer tied to working in the chain mode when you're working with the symmetry tools there. So a couple last minute adjustments to the setup. And from there, um, kind of check everything with your like true smile and we'll go ahead and fine tune our abutment bottoms, right? So just like before, um, we like to kind of minimize like any like hard lines and margins. So we'll reduce the high profile borders and then we're actually going to sink the emergence profiles down um, a couple millimeters subgingival so that this allows us to kind of free form around that gingival area that's like subject to change between like scannings and steps of your initial provisional and your final like healed tissue, right? Again, just making the overall emergences a bit more narrow um, and then we'll kind of free form. It gives us the flexibility to kind of free form the intaglio surface later on. From there, we will set our overall insertion direction of both our bar and our wax up to kind of create this survey model or our virtual wax up bottom. It'll block out any undercuts on your model and your scans. Then we're going to set the margin line to our gingiva. Again, we want to kind of reduce the overall size of the uh, footprint of our restoration. So just ensure that the gingiva is going to capture all the teeth that we're looking for, um, as well as the implant sites. From here, we're going to do a couple quick freeform adjustments, again, with the small region of the gingiva to the large regions, closing out any black triangles from the initial proposal of the gingiva, right? And then also kind of creating a little bit more separation between those roots and um, kind of create a little bit more root eminence um, in our restoration. Checking uh, the gingiva on both sides. Here we're going to kind of ensure that we close out those black triangles from the lingual side and then we'll go ahead and kind of smooth out any like harsh edges. And then kind of clean up the overall margin line a little bit and ensure that our overall uh, gingiva is capturing those teeth in a manner where um, that it's a little bit more smooth. Right? We don't want it protruding in any sort of direction that we didn't want it to. And from here, we're just kind of going to add a little bit, smooth around, around a little bit more. And you can spend a little bit more time here typically to add a little bit more characterization to your gingiva if you needed to. But for this case here, this is going to be pretty good. Again, using those custom views to double check our specific angles. 
And now that we're actually like in true smile, we can actually see the translucency of these teeth. Uh, we've gone into free forming um, through the expert mode and just to add a little bit more character um, to the teeth here before we actually merge the wax up design. Once we're happy with all of that, we'll go into our connectors. Now, um, typically adding the connectors will work fine because like it does add a little bit of smoothness in between the lingual areas of the restoration, right? Um, oftentimes though, like it's not an absolutely necessary step, especially if you're doing a like full contour, like one piece wax up and then a bar underneath. Uh, you're going to notice that sometimes the connectors might get in the way of like s certain merging aspects like the screw channels, which you'll see here in a second. Um, and it's a quick and easy fix um, if you do run into that specific issue. So we'll kind of leave that up to you whether or not you want to use connectors or not. So from here, what we're going to do is just again smooth out the intaglio surface of our wax up. See our wax up has generated successfully combining our gingiva to our teeth. Um, we're kind of softening up that margin line of where we marked it for the gingiva there uh, just to ensure that we kind of flatten out any concavities underneath the intaglio surface. This ensures that it's easy for the patient to clean underneath the restoration. Again, just doing a quick smooth along that initial margin around those implant sites, ensuring that's a nice smooth transition. And again, flattening out any areas that were created by that initial proposal. Now spend some time um, in this step, ensuring that you're not accidentally creating space in certain areas. Again, we're in smooth flatten, we're not in like subtract, right? Um, spending a little bit of time kind of smoothing out the lingual a little bit there. Double checking your restoration at all the necessary angles. And from here, we'll go right into bar design in the expert mode. Um, all of the bar design features will be very similar to those of you that have done bar designs in the past, except this time you have the new split feature. So you can go through all your specific parameters and adjust like the angles and the minimum thicknesses, et cetera, et cetera, from there. Um, but I always recommend just to start with the default values and then make your adjustments once you kind of know which each parameter does what. So um, very similar to the overall margin line for our gingiva, um, but this time we're going to be marking the margin line of our bar, essentially the finish line um, of our bar here. So we're marking it directly on our wax up. Again, just left clicking and then once I get to the end or the beginning, um, I'm just going to double click to finish. Before I double click though, we'll go through and um, kind of make sure that that finish line is like nice and straight. All right, from here you can see the first initial proposal of our split bar, right? So that happened in a matter of seconds. Um, at this point, we're gonna be given the all the same features of the freeforming that we're already used to. Um, what we're doing here is doing a paint and pull. So we're gonna increase the overall height of the bar just a little bit. And instead of like adding material all the way around, um, we're just gonna paint uh, the top section of that bar there and adjust the overall insertion direction as well as the overall height. Um, now we're going to spend a little bit of time in the anatomic freeforming, pushing and pulling, kind of evening out the occlusal height of this bar, ensuring that we're creating enough support, but at the same time maintaining enough kind of space there for our overall wax up sleeve. Again, once we've straightened out the level of this bar here, uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time kind of making the top of this bar a little bit more smooth. Um, so once I push and pull with the anatomic tab, I'm going to go right into smooth flatten and just kind of soften up and flatten the top of this bar out a little bit. And it's always important that, especially if you use that paint and pull feature, that um, you always double check the overall insertion direction of your bar, right? That it like um, will fit the inside of your uh, wax up there. We're not pushing and pulling, creating any undercuts that we didn't mean to. So it is always good to kind of check it from the occlusal view and making sure that um, your insertion direction is still good. All 
At this point, we're going to go ahead and kind of smooth out any areas that were kind of rough in terms of the merging when it like merges around the minimal thickness areas of around your implants, right? So the bar is nice and smooth. Um, now at this point, what we're going to do is merge our wax up to the bar. And for those of you that have designed like superstructures on top of a scanned bar before, this step is the same. It merges like the cement gap space, the flush seating area around your finish line um, and converts that to your wax up. And at this point, the wax up has been converted to that specific finish line. And we're now able to kind of do any last minute freeform adjustments, right? Um, now that we have the wax up separately as well as the bar separately. From there, the software will automatically punch your screw holes through both your bar and your wax up. And so now you can design the split file bar all in one go instead of doing multiple applications, multiple designs, right? You're gonna notice that there's a little bit of floating artifacts around some of these screw channels in this bar. It's not a big deal. At the time of this recording, this version is still kind of like in the beta stages and it'll be releasing very soon what happened here is that once those screw holes kind of punch through like specific connector areas it didn't love doing that so normally we will, all we would have to do do here is go back kind of delete connectors in those specific areas and then remerge the wax up to the bar so quick and easy fix um, if you guys have any questions about this workflow or any of the new features at all in exocad please reach out to us um, thank you for watching and we hope to hear from you soon